Hello everyone, welcome to our weekly cyber security news roundup. In this video, we will be discussing the latest updates on the biggest cyber security incidents, detector breaches and emerging threats from the past week. From ransomware attacks to vulnerability disclosures, we have got you covered with all the important news and analysis you need to stay informed and protected. So sit back and let's dive into the world of cyber security. Do you ever wonder how safe your online transactions really are? As cybercrime continues to evolve, attackers are finding new ways to steal your sensitive data. In a recent development, security researchers have discovered an ongoing mage card campaign that uses realistic looking fake payment screens to capture personal information from users. So what's particularly concerning about this ca new campaign is that the schema used looks even more authentic than the original payment page, making it difficult to detect. These attacks, called digital skimming or form jacking, has been around since 2010 and primarily target e-commerce websites. The latest version of the attack involves the use of skimmer called Cretec, which intercepts the checkout process and, and displays a fake payment dialogue to victims. Once payment card details are harvested, a fake error message about payment cancellation is briefly displayed to the victim before redirecting them to the actual payment page. The attackers behind the campaign are using different domains to host the skimmer, which are given similar names to suggest that they are targeting different online stores with custom models. As a result, discerning whether an online store is trustworthy has become very difficult. The rise of ransomware attacks targeting enterprise continues, and the latest threat comes from the Read the Manual Cybercrime Gang. Known for its involvement in financial fraud, RTM Locker has launched a new ransomware as a service operation and has started recruiting affiliates to join its criminal activities. What sets RTM apart from the other ransomware gangs is that its organizational maturity and strict rules which affiliates are required to follow. The group is targeting virtual machines on VMware ESXi servers, a common choice for many enterprises due to their device management and efficient resource handling. The Linux encryptor that RTM Locker uses has been designed specifically to target EXSI systems, with numerous references to commands used to manage virtual machines. The ransomware encryptor works by first gathering a list of running VMs and then terminating all of them. Afterwards, the ransomware starts encrypting files with specific file extension that are associated with virtual machines running on VMware EXSI servers. Although RTM Locker is a significant threat to the enterprise, the group is not particularly active at this time. However, this could change in future. This latest attack serves as a reminder that businesses must remain vigilant in protecting their networks and data against ransomware attacks. With the RTM Locker encryptor targeting virtual machines, Companies should ensure that their VMs are kept up to date with the latest security patches and that they have implemented best practices for protecting against ransomware. Microsoft has confirmed that the paper cut servers are being actively exploited in cyber attacks linked to ransomware families Clop and Lockbit. The company's threat intelligence team have traced a subset of these attacks to a financially motivated actor known as Lace Tempest. This actor has been observed running multiple PowerShell commands to deliver a TrueBot DLL that attempts to steal LSAASS credentials and injects the TrueBot payload into the conhost.exe service. The next phase of this attack involves the deployment of COBOL Strike Beacon in plan to conduct reconnaissance, move laterally across the network using WMI and exfiltrate files of interest via the file sharing service Megasync. 
In addition, the paper cut flaws have been incorporated into Lace Tempest's attack toolkit since April 13, allowing unauthenticated remote attackers to achieve arbitrary code execution and gain unauthorized access to sensitive information. The same flaws has been exploited by opportunities threat actors. The same flaws has been exploited by threat actors looking to deploy Monero cryptocurrency miners on infected systems. In the world of data visualization and exploration, Apache Superset is a widely used tool that helps users make sense of their data. Unfortunately, this tool has been recently found to be vulnerable to authentication bypass and RCE, potentially allowing attackers to access and modify data, harvest credentials, and execute commands. The vulnerability lies in the default Flask security key used to sign authentication session cookies. This default key can be used by attackers to forge session cookies, granting them administrator privileges to servers that did not change the key. This dangerous default configuration was found to be present in about 2000 internet exposed servers belonging to universities, corporations, government organizations and more. While the developers of Apache have released a new version that changes the default key, existing misconfigurations still persist in over 2000 cases. Administrators are urged to change the default key to a new unknown string to prevent attacks. It is important to note that the vulnerability was discovered by Horizon 3 team and reported to the Apache security team in October 2021. The developers of Apache Superset released version 1.4.1 in January 2022, which changed the default key and added a warning to logs when the default string was detected on startup. In February 2023, Horizon 3 contacted Apache again to raise the issue of remaining misconfigurations and the Superset team eventually released version 2.1 on April 5, 2023, which prevents servers from starting up if they are still using the default key. While this drastic solution is a step in the right direction, administrators of Apache Superset should take note of the vulnerability and take necessary steps to protect their servers. Horizon 3 has even provided a script on GitHub to determine if an instance is vulnerable to attack. Are you a WordPress website owner? If yes, then you need to know about an ongoing cyber attack campaign that has been targeting websites by exploiting a legitimate but outdated WordPress plugin. In a report published last week, cybersecurity firm Sakuri revealed that threat actors have been using the eval PHP plugin, which allows users to insert PHP code into WordPress sites. Although the plugin hasn't been updated in 11 years, statistics from WordPress show that it has been installed on over 8,000 websites, with the number of downloads skyrocketing in recent months. The attackers have been injecting malicious code into compromised websites' databases, making it difficult for server-side scans and file integrity monitoring to detect the malware. The code is quite simple and creates a PHP script into the doc root of the website with a specified remote code execution backdoor. The attackers can easily reinfect the website and stay hidden by visiting one of the infected posts or pages, which injects the backdoor into the file structure. Sakuri detected over 6,000 instances of this backdoor on compromised websites in the last six months, and the WordPress team has now removed the plugin from the repository. Site owners are advised to secure the WordPress admin dashboard and watch out for suspicious logins to prevent threat actors from gaining admin access and installing the plugin. A new defense evasion tool called AUKill is being employed by threat actors to disable endpoint detection and response software. 
The tool exploits an outdated version of the driver used by version 16.32 of the Microsoft Utility Process Explorer to disable EDR processes before deploying either a backdoor or ransomware on the target system. By abusing a legitimate but out of date and exploitable driver signed by Microsoft, the bring your own vulnerable driver technique aims to gain elevated privileges and turn off security mechanisms. This is not the first time the Microsoft signed Process Explorer driver has been weaponized in attacks and poorly managed MS SQL servers are being weaponized to install the Trigona ransomware. The Play ransomware known as Playcrypt actors have been observed using custom data harvesting tools that make it possible to enumerate all users and computers on a compromised network and copy files from the volume shadow copy servers. Ransomware actors are increasingly using proprietary tools such as Xmatter, Xbit and PowerShell based scripts to establish more control over their operations while also adding extra layer of complexity to persist in compromised environments and evade detection. In addition, a new Golang ransomware called Crosslock has been documented, which employs the double extortion technique to increase the likelihood of payment from its victims. The ransomware also performs several actions to reduce the chances of data recovery, whilst simultaneously increasing the attacks effectiveness. If you are a customer of Lloyds Bank, Halifax, TSB Bank or Bank of Scotland, you may have experienced some frustration this Friday when trying to access your online or mobile banking services. Multiple customers have reported difficulties logging in and the banks have confirmed that they are experiencing disruptions related to the online and mobile banking systems. This outage has left customers unable to access their account balances and information, which is particularly frustrating for those whose payday was Friday. The cause of the outage is currently unknown, but the banks are working hard to resolve the issue. It's not surprising that these banks may rely on much of the same server infrastructure, given that Lloyd's Banking Group is the parent company behind all four banks. However, it's still unclear whether the problem is related to a system failure or a cyber attack. Despite the recent statement from a Lloyd Banking Group spokesperson that their mobile and internet banking services are back to normal, some Lloyd's customers are still reporting issues. So that's it for this week. Thanks for tuning in to this week's cyber news update. Don't forget to subscribe to stay up to date with the latest developments in the world of online security. And as always, stay safe and stay secure.